Well, everyone, welcome to Unmuted with Marsha. I think you're really going to enjoy this segment. With Women's History Month, I have three of my favorite women. They are accomplished. They're at the top of their game, and I am just so proud of them. And they are different, and I want you to meet them also. Uh, Dr. Nancy Dishner, she's the president and CEO of the Nicewanger Foundation in Upper East Tennessee. It's there in Greenville. And this foundation focuses on public education in Tennessee, pre-K through post-secondary, and also on career opportunities. The foundation's work is guided by Scott Nicewanger's philosophy, which is learn, earn, and return, <laughs> that importance of giving back. And Dr. Carol Swain, who is such a longtime friend and an amazing story, she went from abject poverty and a high school dropout to a tenured professor at Princeton and at Vanderbilt. She is such an accomplished speaker. She is a political commentator, and she's the author of 12 different books. And Representative Diana Harshbarger, she's the congresswoman from Tennessee's first congressional district there in Northeast Tennessee. She has had a career as a doctor of pharmacy and a business owner, and now she is an elected representative. So welcome to each of you. And I want to start out, and we're going to do this like in one minute segments, like Diana does on the floor of the house. <laughs> I want you to, each of you, and Carol, we'll start with you. Give us a minute about yourself and some of the obstacles that you faced. Well, I was born in rural poverty during the time that the South was segregated. And so I experienced uh, being in segregated schools up until I was in the sixth grade. And obstacles, I, I mean, I watched the civil rights movement take place. I benefited from that. And I came through at a time when the messages out there were, if you worked hard and got an education, you could make something out of yourself. And the emphasis was on making something out of yourself. But because of the poverty in my family, I married at 16, not because I was pregnant, to get away from home and, um, and became a mother. And my life has been a life that I did not anticipate. So obstacles, you know, life is full of obstacles. I can say that uh, God has always been in my life, even though I did not know him until I was in my 40s. And so I would say that my faith and the fact that God's hand was on me from my birth, that that had a lot to do with steering me to the point that I am what many people consider a success story. That is wonderful. And Nancy, how about you? First of all, Carol, what an inspiration. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that probably as far as obstacles are concerned, I I grew up with a mom who really didn't allow that to be an anything to be an obstacle. It was always an opportunity. And uh, and I appreciate that. I, I was very blessed to pick the right parents. Uh, my dad loved me to death and my mama just encouraged me like crazy to try everything and to do everything along the way. They both grew up in poverty, um, a very hard scrabble uh, background of uh, dirt farmers, and were both the first to actually achieve a, a college education. And both of them worked as servants for public education for the state of Tennessee throughout their career. And that was the inspiration and to for me to, to be where I am today. And Diana? Yes. Well, the two ladies previously, let me tell you what stories, I mean, that's a that makes my heart leap with joy to hear where you came from and where you're at now. And just like Carol, I was the first one in my family to even graduate from high school and uh, to go on to college and then go to professional school was something I never dreamed when I was a younger 
a younger woman and the obstacles you face are, do you have somebody to encourage you along the way? You know, I've been a pharmacist 37 years and I've mentored uh, and taught Sunday school for 24 of those years. And, and let me tell you, when you live a real life and when you run a successful business, there is nothing that can stand in your way. And Marcia, you know this. When you get up here, that experience in real life, uh, it, you can't put an obstacle in front of us that we can't tackle and try to take down. And we do that for the American people. And this is just... Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be up here, one of the chosen people to to represent the first district. What an honor this is. There's only, what, a little over 11,000 people who've gotten to do this. So, you know, I encourage young women all the time, you know, we got to get our priorities in order. You know, God first, family second, everything else falls in order. And when you do that, nothing is uh, outside your reach. So it's a pleasure to be here with you ladies. And I appreciate you inviting me to do this, Marcia. Sure. Diana, I want you to talk about how when you have obstacles, when you ha when you face adversity, uh, what powers you to overcome that? Because so many times people are tempted to just throw up their hands and say it's too hard. Yeah. Well, you you know, I don't know if, if you you just learn this by living life, Marsha. And it's one of those things where I pray. My faith is a catalyst for every decision I make. I wouldn't be here if God didn't ordain that to happen. And when you are out here mentoring, and I mentored young people my whole life, and you know, in this business, we have a lot of young staffers. And, you know, we're known by the fruit we bear. And you don't tell me I can't do it. Just it may take me a little longer, but it's just like when you see these things that we have to address here in Congress, it's you talk to everybody. You do your due diligence. You get your facts. Don't let the the white noise around you mess mess you up in the way you you conduct your business. You know, I'm one of these factual kind of people. I'll do my due diligence and then I'll make a decision to do what's right for the people yeah. served. So that's in a nutshell, you pray a whole lot and then you tell them that uh, you, you didn't get here because people didn't trust you. They keep you yeah. here because they do trust you. That is true. And it's so interesting. Each of the three of you have a doctorate and have those advanced degrees. And I know that didn't come easy. Nancy, you had to face so many challenges as you worked through to that, how did you overcome those adversities? Well, I am from a little rural community here in Northeast Tennessee. And in I early on, probably the a, a formative um, thing that happened to me was that, that I did have a teenage pregnancy. And so I uh, actually began college trying to be a mom to um, a, a precious little boy who has, of course, became the love of my life. But through that process, I think that um, that there, there's a lot to learn. But uh, uh, among those things is just that um, we, we face the things we do as a way to teach us and prepare us for what is going to come next. But I think more importantly, it's what we learn from those lessons that then we can share with others. Yeah. God has been so gracious to allow me the opportunity over many years to mentor so many young people. And through that process, if I hadn't have had those life experiences and had not had adversity along the way, how would I possibly help them to be able to overcome where they are? So, yeah, I, that, you know, I would always tell my kids, there's a, no such thing as a fail test. Tell me what you learned. Yes. Very true. And Carol, how about you? Because adversity kind of hit you in the face every direction you turned. And you and I've talked about this from time to time. Well, I want to encourage uh, the women that are watching that, you know, like I can speak for myself that. I have made a lot of mistakes in my life and in my late teens and early 20s, I suffered with depression. I did suicide gestures. I take bottles of pills and, you know, and get rescued, tell someone I took the bottles of pills. And so I had to overcome the depression, but I was sort of uh, wired to have a can-do attitude 
if someone told me I couldn't do something, it was like throwing the gauntlet down. And when I was able to start at a community college, I started at a community college after getting a high school equivalency, a GED, and ended up getting the first of five college and university degrees. And I want to tell people that I believe that it took me 40 years to have a Christian conversion experience, but God was very much in my life and that the people that entered my life did not look like me. My mentors, the ones that uh, pushed me to continue my education, because I never sought to get a PhD. That was not something that I saw on the horizon, but I had people who did not look like me, who were white. Many of them were men who told me that I was intelligent and that I should continue my education. And at one point people were pushing me and I just felt like that I had been successful enough. I, after all, I had five degrees. And so after the first degree, I could have been comfortable, but I went on second, third degree and ended up in academia. But I look at my life and it was because God was there when I didn't know him. He was putting people in my life. They were steering me. I said, yes, I didn't have to say yes, but I want to encourage people. Like if you dropped out of school, you suffer with depression, you come from poverty. If you're a racial and ethnic minority and you're told that because of the color of your skin, what you can't do, mm -hmm. um, like I didn't get those messages about what I couldn't do. And I'm glad I didn't get those messages because if I were a young person today, maybe I would have heard so often what I couldn't do as a woman, what I couldn't do uh, at some point. I was a single mom after a divorce. Uh, I didn't internalize what I couldn't do. And so I went out and I did what some people would say uh, would have been impossible. I got early tenure at Princeton. I won the highest prize in my profession. I was a superstar, signing bonus. I didn't know I would have that future. Yeah. And, you know, I think it just points to hard work and you each have done that. And I am so delighted that you could join us today. You're an inspiration to the people that know you. You're an inspiration to people who are listening to this unmuted. And I know they're going to want to follow you and keep up with you. And as always to our audience, you can find me online at Marsha Blackburn. Thank you so much for joining us today.